Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to mention my Etsy website. On my Etsy website, there are a few different things right now. Um, I can do custom car illustrations or pet illustrations, custom vinyls, custom Instagram decals. Um, I've been working on some different designs for t-shirts, including this one. Um, this one's more artsy, boho related. Um, but I have been doing also car related t-shirts like this one <laughs> Built not bought. I'm really cold. Sorry. Like I said, I can design pretty much anything you want uh, Decals illustrations paintings t-shirts. I just finished a custom t-shirt for our YouTube channel <laughs> DNA adventures <laughs> Anything you want I can make it so check out the link in the description below and let's get to the video so I gotta apologize, we have not posted a video in probably probably two, two weeks or so. I am still traveling for work. If you watch the previous videos, I have mentioned that I travel for work in January and February, and I only get to come home about every two weeks, and it's just for the weekend, so it's really not a lot of time to do anything. Work travel is winding down. I have one week left. Basically tomorrow, I am leaving with a truck and a van trailer to head up and we are going to pack everything up, pack the shop up, pack our testing equipment up, pack all that jazz up, and we're coming back south. I'd say in the last month or so, things have evolved very quickly uh, to start the 2023 uh, show season. I put a nice big down payment on a new trailer, which I'm really excited about. So we're gonna service the six liter. That way, as soon as I get the phone call that trailer's done, we can hop in it and leave. It is about 20 miles from East Palestine, which is where that train derailed. So. I'm not going to drink any of the water. So besides building other people's cars and building my cars and traveling to shows in the six liter, it's going to be, oh, and I always forget about this, a child. You know, we have a child coming. That's pretty important. Um, besides cars, shows, trucking, childing, it's going to be a pretty big year for us. So we're excited. So today we're going to do an oil change, a service on the six liter. I'm going to grease it, check all the diffs, check the, the trans, the transfer case, I'm gonna do a brake fluid flush, everything, so it's ready to rock and roll. So, here we go. All right, start the service on the six liter. I run Schaefer's oil in the six liter because it's the best. The 2016 filter, make sure if you order it online, it has the double A at the end. I mean, it's made in the US and it's not a Gina filter. I've been running Schaefer's in this ever since I've owned it, every one of my cars well, I can't say every one of my cars. Her car is getting Schaefer's 530. The dailies run Valvoline because I change them so often. Schaefer's is expensive. I used to run Schaefer's in the STI until I rebuilt the motor. Now it gets Valvoline VR1 10W30. It is a conventional oil uh, because I'm still on the break-in period. Eventually, when I switch it over to synthetic, it will be Valvoline full synthetic VR1 racing oil 1030. I like that oil a lot. We used to run it in our race truck, which is, you know, right there. Schaefer's for that, VR1, Schaefer's in that. Schaefer's is also in the front and rear differentials as well, the gear oil. All right, this is gonna be interesting because I've never tried to pour and record at the same time. So Schaefer's is a very good oil and it's well known because of the color. You can see it's actually green. It's a green color. So I think uh, to make this a little easier to do whatever, I'm gonna switch to the GoPro. Make it a little easier. That way I'm not trying to hold my phone up like this. So I'll be right back. All right, switch to the GoPro. It's uh, February, yes, February 26th and it's 50 degrees. I love it. I'm ready to come home for good. Almost done though, one week. Oh, it's a fly. I hear something like dripping. Like I thought I had a leak, but I'm like, it hasn't, it's sunny. But it's a fly hitting the roof. I thought it was a leak. Oh, there you are. Hi fly. I don't really know where I left off. Right, let's change the filters, we'll go from there. Two of the four gallons of oral in it's it takes 15 quarts so basically four gallons i'm not sure what that converts to to metric gallons but whatever so we're gonna put the last one or the third one in right now okay i can't i can't do this and hold a camera you're gonna be staring at my eyeball the whole time hold please ah dang it leave that sit this stuff's so expensive you want every drop out of the jug 
this was literally just changed because I did studs and crap last year. Like I changed this filter like four times just to make sure nothing was floating around in the oil. Look at that, it's a brand new filter. This is the oil that come out of the filter. It's like not even black. So after I shut the camera off, obviously I double check my work because I could get distracted talking to you people and not do it correctly, which would not be very good. Okay, let's do a what's in the box. Hi, a what's in the box of a 2016 Motocraft filter. It is a filter and no, an O-ring. And an O-ring. That's what's in the box. Uh, well, and I did. <laughs> you know, it comes with instruction kit. Instructions, though, if you don't know how to change an oil filter. Personally, if you have to read instructions on how to change an oil filter, you probably should be doing a service. Filter. Snaps. Yeah, all right, enter filter into hole. By hand until you cannot anymore, all right? You will feel it get snug. Right there, it is snug. That means you, the plastic is hitting the metal of the housing. Just give it a little uh, double up. Uh, uh. That's all you need. And that's how you change an oil filter on a 2003 six liter diesel. Okay? It's amazing. Just, oil filters change, changed, past tense. And we have 15 quarts of fresh 5W40 Schaefer's Oral in. So the oily, the oil change is done. Drain, filled, filter is changed. Now we are going to change the two fuel filters. There is a little guy up here, and then down the frame rail on your lift pump, there's a bigger one. There's oil, fuel is here. This is the one that goes here. It's smaller, compact, but it does the job. This is the one that goes down. In the frame rail on the lift pump, you can tell there is a size. Size does matter. I know this much is true. So very slowly lift this out. There's some fuel in the bowl. Give it a good shaking. If say you shake it more than twice, I'd say you're playing with it. So here's your cap, here's your filter, here's the insert. Goes right there. Kind of give it a little click, make sure it's sitting evenly, nice and flush. Your O-ring in there, take some fuel, kind of lube up your O-ring a little bit. Never want to uh, shove anything into a hole with your O-ring dry. Kids, ask your parents about that. So true. Same thing, looks like the oil filter. Done. No freaking need to Hercules this down. Not recommend to use this type of ratchet when changing, this is annoying. Really? I didn't hear it hit the ground either. <sighs> I'm still young and dumb, that's why I don't have a lift yet. Right there, that's where the filter goes, as you can see. Brand new grease gun, first time using it. Uh, when I transferred from the old shop to the new shop, I said, you know, screw it. I bought a lot of new stuff, so like grease gun, all kinds of, I went to Harbor Freight and basically, I got a Harbor Freight credit card, so let's just go with that. Everything on the front end, steering components and stuff, is new. I did that last year, so, I mean, nothing too crazy exciting, so. Front end is greased. That is the only thing that is greasable. I still have the factory U-joints, which is probably not the best of ideas, but they are they don't have any slop in them or anything, so I haven't had any reason to replace them. So I'm gonna check the rear diff, the transfer case, and the front diff, and then uh, we're gonna attempt to break fluid flush because it's probably got the same fluid since 20 years old I don't know it's pretty black so and hauling the cars around I would like some fresh fluid in my brakes so I did change this last year so it's probably pretty clean at least I hope unless I have water somehow getting in my differential and water in your rear end is not good Oh, I can smell it. I can smell her rear end fluid. None coming out. That's good, I guess. Oh yeah, perfect. Look at that. Nice, clean. You want your rear end fluid nice and clean. So put the 
check plug back in and move on. Yeah. I've never had problems putting a plug in my rear end. <laughs> this is ATF, so this is going to look red in color and not goldish rear diff color. Hopefully we're level. Let's stick it in. Oh, <laughs> Spit on it. Oh yeah. Lice in red. Oh, we're dripping. Dripping out of the hole. Oil, check. Oil in motor, check. Filters, check. Both fuel filters, check. Grease the front end, check. Diffs, check. Transfer case, checked. Wing left is the brake fluid flush. I'm going to go ahead and go around and crack the bleeders to make sure that they all come loose before I even attempt this, so stand by. Hopefully you can hear me, compressor's running. The back, both bleeders came loose, which was the one, those were the ones I was worried about because they're older calipers. The front uh, was replaced by the previous owner, so those should come loose, but we are making progress. We're sucking out of the reservoir, so. Uh, as soon as we start getting clear fluid through the line on the bleeder, I'll shut everything up, move to the front, and then fill the uh, reservoir back up. So, we're making progress. No, no broken bleeders yet. We're halfway done. I am actually rather surprised. That went really smooth. It's about a half a quart of, of fluid. So, now, let's see if she'll fire up. Not gonna walk to that side, too loud. Had an air bubble in it, so it died, but now running on on, running on all eight cylinders. That's kind of hard to say. I know the six liters get a lot of, you know, a lot of crap, but I love this truck, I really do. It's clean, it's, it's older, it's different. There's no emissions on it, it runs. You turn the key and it runs. I mean, I love it. Appreciate everybody for watching. We appreciate everybody for watching and supporting the channel. Be sure to check out her Etsy account. Link, in, link is in the description below. Uh, please like and subscribe. It's gonna be one big year for us between the baby and everything we're gonna be doing this year with the cars and the truck. Um, it's gonna be a very exciting year for us. So like I said, I appreciate everybody for watching. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.